Senator Udall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, thank you, Senator Corker and members of the committee, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to introduce Ambassador Deborah Jones. Ambassador Jones has served with great distinction over a long, a long career in the U.S. De State Department. She also is a fellow New Mexican, and we are proud of her accomplishments. Her family has lived in both New Mexico and Arizona since her grandparents moved from Mexico's Colonia Dublan. She has lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico since 1991. New Mexico is proud to add her to the long list of distinguished ambassadors who have called New Mexico home. Ambassador Jones has dedicated her life to public service, and she has tried to instill those same values in her children. Her daughter, Isabel, recently worked as an intern in my office, and I believe she's here today with us. In, ni in 1982... How did you do? How did you do? And, and of course, Ambassador uh, Jones will introduce the, the rest of her family, but I thought I should give special recognition there to Isabel. In 1982, Ambassador Deborah Jones began her career as Vice Consul of the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. While her career began in Latin America, she soon, to be, she soon began to develop her expertise in the Middle East. She's no stranger to tough assignments. In the early 1990s, she served as the Consular Section Chief in Damascus, Syria. She was the desk officer for the Hishamite Kingdom of Jordan from 1995 through 1997. Uh, she also was director of the Office of the Arabian Peninsula Affairs and Iran Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs. And she served with distinction in her critical work as chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait. She speaks Arabic, Spanish, and French. She has an MS in National Security Strategy from the National War College and a BA in History from Brigham Young University. Following her service as ambassador in Kuwait, she has worked as a senior advisor for international affairs at the U.S. Naval War College and a scholar in residence at the Middle East Institute. Ambassador Jones will be ready from day one to tackle the numerous challenges facing Libya. The Libyan people are still struggling to remake their country after years of despotic leadership. The Libyan government has also been under strain to rein in militias, as Senator Corker talked about. These groups have attempted to use coercion and intimidation to exact legislative changes, such as the recently passed political isolation law and a terrorist threat still exists today in Libya, a threat which has resulted in attacks on civilians and government officials and embassies, including in Benghazi. Ambassador Jones will be our first ambassador since the tragic events at Benghazi. As we consider this nomination, it's important to remember the work of Chris Stevens and all our diplomatic personnel who died while in service to the United States. Ambassador Stevens and his staff believe strongly that the value of freedom embraced by both Libyan and the American people would prevail. Ambassador Jones, if confirmed, will be taking on the important foreign policy task of representing the United States in Libya. She will be continuing the important diplomatic work begun by Ambassador Stevens. I have every confidence that she's up to the task to move us forward in Libya and in North Africa which has emerged as a region of great importance to our country. And I am thankful for the time she has already spent with me discussing these vital issues. A peaceful and democratic Libya is important for regional stability. It is important for the interests of the United States. It is no secret that the Gaddafi regime created lasting damage in Libya, or that the milita militant groups that have attempted to take advantage of a government and country that is still in transition. Ambassador Jones will need to work with the Libyan government to enhance security and the rule of law. And she will have the important work of balancing access with security at our embassies and consulates through, I know she's going to do that well, and through our discussions, I know she is mindful of this important job. She is has a keen understanding of the responsibility being given to her by the President, if confirmed. Mr. Chairman, thank you again for the opportunity to introduce Ambassador Jones. 
The President has wisely chosen an individual of great experience, expertise, and commitment, and I look forward to supporting such a well-qualified candidate. Thank you again. Thank you, Senator Yerdahl. Thank you for all of those insights. Uh, and I, I will Jones. excuse myself here, but I'm sure that uh, she will do very well without me. Yeah.